Now, losing your hair can be pretty alarming. And you might be worried about your own hairline. You might not know whether or not you've got a receding hairline or just a mature hairline. So in this video today, we're gonna to be showing you the exact differences between a mature and a receding hairline and what you can do about addressing both of them. And so guys, before we get into the video on the mature and receding hairlines, if you are worried about your own hair loss, what you can do is click the link in the description, upload a quick hair selfie, answer a few short questions, and our, you will get a free hair guard analysis. So what we're gonna look at today in this video is we're gonna have a brief introduction. We're gonna look at the differences between a mature and a receding hairline. We're gonna talk about some of the causes of a receding hairline. Then we're gonna see how you can tell whether you suffer from male pattern baldness or not. Then we'll talk about how you can lower your hairline and then we've got a quick conclusion. So as you age, it's normal to notice differences in your hairline but it can be difficult to distinguish when the changes that are taking place are a natural part of aging or when they may indicate something more. So what's the difference between a mature hairline and a receding hairline? First things first, let's get a few definitions out of the way. The hairline is a line of hair follicles which outline the outermost edges of your hair. Where the hairline naturally lies will depend on genetics and other such factors. As you age, the hairline will naturally recede. It can do so evenly, moving the entirety of the hairline back a centimetre or so, or it can do so unevenly, moving certain parts of the hairline farther back than others. With the above two hairline recession types in mind, it's easy to see that there is a difference between the two. The first instance of a receding hairline, the one in which the line moves back evenly, is known as a mature hairline. This creates a more distinct hairline, uh, moving away with the more rounded edges commonly seen in the young. Now a receding hairline, however, is one which moves higher on the head, but does so in, a, in more certain areas. For example, you may notice your entire hairline is moving upwards, but the recession at your temples is more rapid and noticeable. In the majority of individuals, a mature hairline will develop as they age. In others, though, that mature hairline will continue to recede, and this is known as male pattern baldness. So what causes a receding hairline? Alopecia is a catch-all term that includes all kinds of hair loss, no matter the cause. However, a receding hairline is often a sign of one particular type of hair loss, known as androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia is more often known as male pattern baldness, though it can also occur in women. The telltale sign of the condition is the horseshoe pattern of hair loss. As the condition worsens, the patterns will deepen. But what's the cause? Well, genetic and androgen factors combine to promote the development and progression of the condition. Twin studies have shown that hereditary accounts for around 80% of the predisposition to baldness. However, the actual cause is much more complicated. The role of androgens, that is steroid hormones, in androgenetic alopecia is well documented. In particular, the androgen dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, is believed to play a key role in follicle miniaturization and eventual hair fall. This is because men and women with androgenetic alopecia have an inherited sensitivity to the androgen, which in turn leads to inflammation when DHT connects to the follicles. And why the horseshoe pattern? That's explained by DHT too. There are certain follicles which are more sensitive to the androgen than others. In males, these happen to be at the temples and hairline. In females, they are more likely at the crown. But there are other factors that are believed to contribute to this pattern of sensitivity as well in particular, scalp tension. Now the hypothesis is as follows. Chronic scalp tension transmitted from the Galia aponeurotica induces an inflammatory response in androgenetic alopecia prone tissues. Dihydrotestosterone increases in androgenic alopecia prone tissues as part of this inflammatory response. And dihydrotestosterone does not directly miniaturize hair follicles. So how can you tell whether you suffer from male pattern baldness? As mentioned, a receding hairline typically begins to recede after the mature hairline has taken shape. But what if you want to stop hair loss in its tracks and not get to a point where the difference is obvious? Consider that one of the telltale signs of a receding hairline is the distinctive horseshoe pattern. This is caused when the hairline recedes more quickly in the temple areas, either causing balding or thinning of the hair. If your mature hairline is taken to this pattern, 
then it's time to consider that male pattern baldness may be the culprit. Other early signs of balding include increased hair shedding, irritated scalp, thin wispy hairs and slower hair growth. If male pattern baldness is your concern, though another major indicator of whether you may be susceptible to this condition is whether your older male relatives have it as well. While relatives with male pattern baldness does not guarantee that you would develop it, you're at higher risk than others. And this is known as genetic predisposition. So now guys, we're gonna look at some ways that you can lower your hairline. If male pattern baldness is the source of your stress, there are a few approaches you can take to stop the baldness in its tracks and lower your hairline. The first step is to discover the real cause of hair loss. There are a variety of factors which contribute to hair thinning. For those suffering from androgenetic alopecia, though sensitivity to dihydrotestosterone is the culprit. It's important to find the true cause of your hair loss. Even though some treatments overlap, there are those conditions which require more specialized attention. The easiest way to find out the cause of your hair loss is by visiting a dermatologist. They can perform examinations and tests which will tell them more about the quality of your scalp and hair follicles, as well as pinpoint the most likely cause of loss. The second step is to stop it from worsening. This is easier said than done, of course, but to prevent further recession and keep your hair follicles healthy, you first need to stop any further thinning and or recession. How can you do this? Well, the traditional treatment route includes minoxidil and finasteride, and they're known as Rogaine and Papisha. Now, minoxidil is a topical solution that was originally developed as an oral hypertensive. However, one side effect to the drug that patients and doctors noticed was hair growth. In fact, this side effect became so well known that the drug was often prescribed for off-market use in men with pattern hair loss. But eventually, a topical solution, Rogaine, was developed and it was later approved by the Federal Drug Administration. In the years since, it has also been approved for use by women. Uh, you've also got finasteride, and finasteride is an oral prescription that is used in the treatment of male pattern baldness. It works by inhibiting the activities of 5-alpha reductase, an enzyme responsible for the production of DHT. The drug is currently only approved by uh, the FDA for use in men, though physicians will sometimes prescribe it to their female patients. Now we've got microneedling, and it's a more natural approach to hair growth. Uh, the technique involves a tool, either a roller, stamp or pen, that utilises tiny needles to puncture the scalp. Without causing pain or damage, the derma roller penetrates the dermal layer of skin, increasing blood flow to the hair follicles and stimulating new cell production. In fact, this technique has been shown to be effective even in men who fail to respond to more traditional treatments. And then the third and final step is to treat the hair loss at its source, and this is the most important step. Now that the cause has been discovered, as well as your scalp being cleansed and prepared for hair growth, it's time to treat it at its source. The source can be different things for different people, depending on condition or type. As mentioned above, those with androgenetic alopecia are sensitive to dihydrotestosterone. However, other types can be caused by fungal infections, prescription medications, and even diet. The majority of hair loss types have solutions, however. For example, fungal infections can be treated with prescription medications and medicated shampoos and diet imbalances can be treated with nutritional supplements. Now, while a maturing hairline is normal, especially for those in early adulthood, sometimes it can be a sign of things to come, and in this case, male pattern baldness. Thankfully, there are steps you can take to stop losing more hair and even stimulate new hair growth. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you today on a mature versus receding hairline. If you are worried about your hair loss or you think you may have a receding hairline, Make sure to click the link in the description to get your hair guard analysis and make sure to also hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.